2016 budget priorities. We have this, we have approximately 30 minutes budgeted, um, and we're, we're not going to be really tight on the time, but I think given the hour, we'll try to keep it to 35 or 40 minutes. I have about five minutes, maybe not quite four minutes worth of comments that I want to make as we move forward. I'm sure it will, these will elicit uh, debate and discussion. First, um, again, as we said, our, our work tonight begins on the 2016 budget. And I hope as we go down this process, it will become to understand that this is not about, it should not be about ideology and philosophy. There's a good reason why 75% of American cities have nonpartisan elections. And most of the ones that, uh, that are not, frankly, are in machine cesspools from the, about the yesteryear. The vast majority, overwhelming majority of this country has pulled party labels off local elections. And, and that's because what we're involved in is about protecting our citizens and delivering services to them at a reasonable cost. Unfortunately, during this year's budget process, there have been some bitter and venomous disputes and that we've seen some rhetoric that we heard at the state and national levels have frankly reared their ugly head here in our own debates in Bloomington, Illinois. So let's be clear, issues such as health care, gay marriage, and the fiscal irresponsibility of the state and national government have no place directly anything to do with what we're dealing with here in Bloomington. And I can certainly fully understand people's frustrations with the politics of Springfield and Washington. I mean, when, when you hear these polls that 87% of people disapprove of Congress and 9% approve, I kind of wonder, the 9%, what do you approve of, right? And that's not the case. So some of the rhetoric and talking points that we've heard from national political debate have been thrown a lot, frankly, in the last several weeks. This doesn't help our, prog our progress, making progress in our community, quite the contrary. The ideological and partisan uh, invectives are poison. They're not going to help move us forward. And as most any observer of local government in the world will tell you, political scientists, policy analysts, public administration people, there are very, very few ideological leaders that are successful in local government. They don't make it or they realize, oh, all that ideological crap that I've been fighting at the national level doesn't apply here at the local level. In the United States, we had a few people called sewer socialists about 100 years ago that got elected during the progressive era in Detroit and some other places in Milwaukee. And they realized, oh, uh, I guess I have to deliver public services. Forget all that ideological stuff. So the broad, sometimes abstract policy debates about the role of government at higher levels uh, that are often removed from day-to-day -day realities do not provide clear policy guidelines to us in delivering public services to specific communities. Further. Uh, we may not always know what we're getting for our money in Washington or in the state, but here in Bloomington, it's quite clear. And as I mentioned, the vast majority is police, fire, public works. And the next largest category is parks and rec combined 4% of our, our budget. So at the local level, we deliver services and we deliver them directly. So if some of our citizens don't want even inflationary costs in our services, uh, so national political you know, talking points such as government needs to live within its means, well, that's fine. But then at the local level, that means we here in Bloomington have already shed almost 100 positions. The logical follow-up question is, what large group of people do you want to lay off or what core functions of the city of Bloomington do you not want us to, to con excuse me, continue to deliver? So the tire hits the pavement here in Bloomington. That's our reality. And my last introductory point is that as we move forward in this discussion, and we're going to throw a lot of ideas out, and I'm sure, you know, we're not going to agree. We're human. That's going to happen. But we must have good data. And otherwise, we are fooling ourselves or we're promising people a free lunch. And there are no free lunches. Now, some may say I'm a stickler for data, and that may be true. I've been involved in local government decision-making for nearly 30 years, and literally when I was at the International City County Management Association, I literally wrote the book on for them on how you use data in making local government decisions about 25 years ago. But the level of scrutiny I'm suggesting is actually very, very minimal. And that is, if we're talking about items, and especially we're talking about budget cuts, there at least ought to be four things that I would assume every reasonable person could agree on. First,